Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I got a little project we're going to be working on the shop. This is something a little bit different than normal for my channel. Uh, it is a piece of vintage machinery and we're going to be doing a restoration on it. But what we're going to be working on is this old antique typewriter. And yes, it definitely qualifies as a piece of vintage machinery. In fact, when you look at the uh, mechanisms in these old typewriters, they are really amazing that people were able to come up with this kind of stuff back in the days before computers and, and the technology that we have available to us today. Uh, this particular typewriter is made by Remington. It's a Remington Rand. Uh, according to the serial number, it was made in 1939. Uh, which was the first year that this model was introduced. They made this model up through 1950, according to the research that I've been able to do on the internet. And uh, this particular typewriter belonged to my father-in-law, and a little story on it, he uh, is a pharmacist. Uh, when he got out of pharmacy school in 1968, he moved to Tifton, Georgia, and went for, to work for a uh, drugstore here in town. Uh, at, at some point down the road, him and the man who became his business partner, who also went to work for that same drugstore about the same time, they ended up purchasing the company, uh, and uh, the other owner, the original owner, retired. They took the business over. They ran the business up and through the early 2000s when they, in turn, sold the business and uh, later on retired. But when he came to work there in 1968, this typewriter was at the pharmacy, and it was one of the typewriters that they used to actually type the labels on the medicine bottles. Uh, this was the one that he used. He, this, there was uh, two typewriters, and the, his partner used the other one. Uh, they had their counter set up where they kind of had their own stations. Uh, but this was my father-in-law's typewriter that he used, and he used it up until about 1982 uh, when they computerized the drugstore, and then the labels were printed on a, a printer uh, like you would see really even today. They kept this typewriter in the drugstore for many years as kind of a backup in case the computers went down. Of course, it wasn't used very much. Uh, when he retired and sold the business, uh, he brought it home. And unfortunately, he just kind of stuck it in a shed out behind the house uh, where he keeps his lawnmower and some other stuff. And uh, anyway, we found it out there. My, my wife, what kind of uh, brought this on is my wife has decided she wants a typewriter. She wants an old-fashioned typewriter. She wants to be able to type letters and envelopes and so forth. And uh, the inspiration for this actually comes from one of my viewers who sent me a letter in the mail that had an envelope that was typed on a typewriter. She says, I want a typewriter. She said, I think my dad has the old typewriter out of the drugstore. So we went and dug this thing up and brought it home. And so we're going we're gonna to restore it. We're going to bring it back. Let's uh, zoom in here and show you what we got, and um, we're going to get started on this project, and hopefully uh, it's going to not be too terribly difficult, but most things turn out to be. Let's uh, see what we got. So here you go, guys. This is the typewriter. It is filthy nasty. Uh, fortunately, for the most part, it appears to be working. It's a manual typewriter. Yeah, some of the keys kind of stick. Uh, but with all the dirt and grime in here, yeah, it, it, the carriage switches over when you push it in far enough. I don't want to push it too hard. Uh, I mean, it's, it appears to be, uh, generally speaking, in working condition. The biggest thing that I've got to deal with is this thing is just filthy, filthy, filthy. Between uh, 80 years of, of uh, grease and gunk and dirt, and plus sitting in the barn for the last 20 years, uh, it's in bad need of a good cleaning, and uh, we'll see what else needs to be done. So, uh, yeah, we got some peeling paint up here on this little hood piece. I wish that that was not the case. The rest of the paint appears to be in pretty good shape. Um, we're going to decide, probably going to try to leave the original paint on here. I hate to try to strip the paint off only for this little section up here. Uh, we might just have to live with that, that peeling paint. My wife will probably get to make that call. So um, let's uh, start seeing if we can take a few pieces off and uh, start the cleaning process. I am not a typewriter expert by any means. Whoops, but I'm gonna pull some parts off. I'm gonna call this the hood. It just looks like a hood to me. And uh, that exposes kind of the stuff in here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this ribbon out uh, just to kind of get it out of the way. I'm sure I'm going to have to find a new ribbon for this. Uh, this ribbon here, I'm sure it's just the ink's probably dried up in it beyond, beyond being able to use. 
Uh, let's see. I can remember as a boy having these old typewriters around and playing with them. My grandfather had one that he used to fill out reports on. I have no idea whatever happened to that one. Um, and I can, but I can remember being over at his house on the weekends and he'd be filling out his reports and playing with his typewriter. Uh, it was always fun. So anyway, you can see down in here, yeah, that thing is nasty, nasty, nasty. I'm hoping that a good cleaning and a good oiling is going to take care of most things on this. I'm going to flip it around to the back, and I know that this panel on the back pops out. There we go. That exposes some more. I was able to, I actually had this part off. The serial number, I did some research on the internet. The serial number is right here. And there is a site on the internet where you can look up serial numbers for these things and figure out when they were made. I bet you this piece comes off right here. Yeah. Okay. And if I remember right from a child, it seems like I remember this piece, I believe this is called the Platon. I believe that they come out. So I'm going to pull up that piece, pull up that piece. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get that out of there for right now. I don't want to take this thing apart any farther than I really have to. But I think this would kind of give me a good starting point. I don't really see anything else that's going to come off real easily right now. It, if I knew more about them, they probably would. But uh, to start with, my first cleaning operation, I'm going to get the air compressor out with some uh, compressed air, and we're just going to try to blow out as much of this old garbage as we can. And I think it'll be surprising how much we'll actually blow out of here. Most of this is just loose stuff. All right, we got some compressed air here. Now we start the cleaning process and uh, guys I'm just using some simple green here uh, we're just going to spray it on here I've done a little bit of research on this and this is what the guys that are working on these things all the time kind of using the processes I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos everybody kind of does the same thing I got a uh, just a nylon brush here it's a nice stiff brush and we're gonna get in here and kind of start scrubbing and the goal here is we want to get all this uh, dirt, grime, grit, everything else uh, off of this that we can. And surprisingly, uh, whoops, lost the key there. I'm just going to set it aside right now. Surprisingly, uh, it doesn't really seem to like it messes with the decals too much, which is good. I can already tell a difference. You couldn't even read those letters on this keyboard a while ago. And they're starting to kind of pop out there. And you can see the dirt and gunk and grime. Just coming right off this one. Watch see that towel down there below it. Look at that. Wow, what a difference. That alone has made a huge difference. So I got to noticing there was this little spring just kind of dangling down here. I believe it attaches to this little uh, 
boss up here so I'm going to try to get down in here and uh, get that up there where it belongs. When you look at all the pieces in here, all the moving parts, it's amazing that these things worked and it's amazing that again back in the early part of this uh, last century that they were able to really figure out how to build one of these things. There we go. Somebody put this thing together by hand. I'm sure it was on the assembly line, but still, um, just absolutely amazing. It's, it's really complex. And when I flip this thing back over, a couple of uh, roller bars had fallen out. I got to figure out where those go. And I think I'm going to see if I can get this piece out. It looks like it just comes out of here. Yeah, and there's a lot more dirt down there up underneath that. Probably needed to come out of there anyway. Guys, I spent some time trying to blow this thing out, get as much of this moisture out of here as I can. And um, now what I'm doing is I'm just taking some oil. This is just some uh, tool oil, really fine oil and I'm trying to just get a little drop or two down in here in places where I see things are moving and sliding uh, like right here oh yeah big difference um, see, it looks like some needs to go down there there's kind of a way down here in the bottom, kind of like on a lathe. That is making a big difference just right there. And I pulled these rollers out, or actually they came out. I believe this one goes right here. Tell you what, I'm gonna put a little oil. There's a shaft that comes up through here. This rotates on that. When I was in high school, I took typing my senior year. Uh, I've often told the story to folks that uh, I took it kicking and screaming. I did not want to take typing. And when I took typing, it was on a typewriter. Uh, we didn't have computers in the school at that time. I'm not going to say there wasn't any. I think my senior year in high school, we had a computer lab with some uh, computers. But I mean, even in the office, they just didn't have any com uh, computers just kind of before that time. But I did take typing on a typewriter. It wasn't a manual typewriter, it was an electric typewriter. Uh, but I did take it and I did not want to take that class. I thought typing was for girls. And I look back now and that was probably one of the most valuable classes I took in high school. Not because I'd type on a typewriter, but it taught me keyboarding, uh, which I use with the computer. And I can actually type pretty quick. When I was in college, uh, most of my papers that I wrote when I was an undergraduate, I had to get someone to type them for me on a typewriter. By the time I was in graduate school, we were starting to get into um, computers, and I actually had access to a computer when I was in graduate school. I wrote my master's thesis uh, on an old DOS-based computer with WordPerfect as my word processor, DOS-based WordPerfect. Uh, we've come a long way since then. All right, I think we're moving along here. I want to get the uh, plate, and I think that's what they call this. I need to clean this real good because uh, you can see it's rusty, cus crusty. So let me get out the scrub brush, and we'll scrub it up.
This piece here is what that roller kind of guides on and uh, I'm going to take some time here to make sure this is good and clean. I got a little bit of looks like rust down in there on it. I got a brass brush here since I'm on metal. I'm not worried about being a little bit more aggressive here. get this piece back in there now so this kind of was up underneath this back piece I think it just kind of set down in there like that and then see open those back up There we go. That one's in. That one's in. Let's see if we can uh, clean this piece up. see that dirt coming off of it. right back here and protects all this uh, stuff up underneath it. There's a couple little tabs on each side. There we go. So we got our back panel here. Scrub-a-dub-dub. And I think we got that. Now this uh, cover comes in. There's a little uh, latch for it back there. And then it looks like it just kind of, yep, goes up on there like that. Now for the part I've been dreading is uh, this piece here. We've got a lot of crack and peeling paint on it and I imagine that most of this paint, if not all of it's gonna come off with some scrubbing here. I just, there's no way around it. Uh, all I know to do is just get in here and see what stays and see what goes. It is what it is. Um, can't be helped, but that's what's left of the paint on that. And uh, you know what? It adds a little character. I'm going to put it back on and see what it looks like here. 
Well, I think we've got most of the dirt and grime kind of cleaned off of this now, but uh, I still need to do a little more cleaning down here on the inside of this basket. You can still see a fair amount of just uh, gunk in here uh, and so forth. Uh, things appear to be not too bad, but I do have a couple of keys that were uh, sticking a little bit. Uh, so what I want to do, and, and, and guys, I'm just going to say right now, some people are probably going to tell me that I shouldn't have gotten any um, simple green down the inside of this because you don't want to get the moisture in here. And I understand that, but it was really nasty. And at the end of the day, I don't think it's really hurt anything. And two, the next step I'm going to be doing is taking some denatured alcohol and really getting in here and scrubbing these keys and cleaning them up. And the nice thing about that alcohol is, is that it will displace any moisture that's in here. It's going to kind of drip down through. It'll displace any moisture that's in there, and it will evaporate and dry nice and clean. So I'm, I'm really, knowing that I'm kind of coming back with this next step, I'm not too worried about uh, getting that in there. Before I do anything, I think I'm going to get some paper towels, some clean towels or something to put up underneath this. Let me uh, grab, tell you what, and I'm going to start. I just, I just poured some denatured alcohol. I'm using denatured alcohol. You can get this at your home improvement stores. I poured some into a cup and I've just got a brush and I'm just going to start by getting down in here and really just kind of getting it in there. What's going to happen is, is this going to kind of wash through these things? Um, some of this stuff's going to drip down below. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but what we're trying to do is dissolve any grease. Uh, this will further clean things, any oil, anything grimy that's in there. It's just going to kind of help dissolve that out and get it on out. It's not going to remove rust or anything like that. I'm just using this little thin brush right now just to kind of wash some stuff down there. I don't, don't really want to just pour it in there, but I do want to get it down in here. And this is going to really help dissolve anything that's in these little slots and help clean it out. Um, I'm also going to use a toothbrush here. I want to also hit my typeface. One thing you do want to be careful of with this denatured alcohol is you really want to avoid getting on the finish of the typewriter because it can damage some finishes. However, on the inside stuff, you're not going to hurt anything. And while I'm doing this, you know, I'm just going to want to work these keys. I'm just going to go right down the keyboard. Make sure everything's working right. I'm looking for any stuck keys. That's actually helping. When I started this, uh, zero key. It's still not wanting to go all the way back down. I need to spend some time on that one. And notice I'm pulling it up. Let me get this other um, this other brush. I'm going to get this other brush in here. really get down in there and see if I can get that cleaned up a little bit better where hopefully it'll I'm not sure what's going on with it it's like it doesn't want to come all the way down hmm I might have to resort to something else on that. Another thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of push down more or less on all the keys at one time. Try to get most of them kind of up out of the way. That'll kind of give me some access down up underneath the bottom. I realize my arm is probably in the way. I apologize, but uh, we're just trying to get down in here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, Try to get in here and do a little cleaning. I 
I'm just going between each and every one of these keys back here. I'm going to try something. I've got some Renaissance wax here. This is a microcrystalline wax polish. Um, I've had this for a long time. This stuff is expensive. Um, I probably had this bottle for 20 years. I still got a little bit left in here. I mostly use this on hand tools in my woodworking shop, hand planes and things like that. I wipe it on. It helps protect the metal, helps keep it from oxidizing, and also gives you a little bit of a lubricant between you know the wood and whatever. It's an excellent uh, metal type uh, lubricant. Um, sorry, I bumped the camera. It's an excellent metal type lubricant and it is dry. It shouldn't really attract anything. So I'm just gonna put some of this down in here and let's see if that helps this key at all. Still not wanting to go all the way down. I think it's going to be fine though, but it's sure not going to hurt anything. And while I got this out, I think what I'm going to do, now that I've got this pretty clean, I'm going to get a clean rag and I'm just going to wipe a thin coat of this wax over the whole typewriter. And uh, again, it's, it's made for protecting metal surfaces and finishes. So uh, I think it's going to be fine. I put it on top of uh, paint and even uh, like wood finishes all the time to just kind of give you some protection. Just got a little rag here, clean rag. And we're just going to put a nice little thin coat on here. Here we go. Well guys, with that, we're going to call it done for now. I, uh, you know, it's, it's not perfect by any means. I don't know that I'd call this a restoration. I think I'm going to call it more a, just a good thorough cleaning. Uh, it's more of a just getting it operational again and uh, while I could go in here and repaint it and probably make it pop and look a lot nicer than it is I like the fact that it looks like it's used and it's uh, been used and you know it just it just has some character and knowing that the family history behind this I really don't want to I really don't want to strip all that old paint off uh, because I think it loses a lot of character at least in this situation when you do that. Well, there you go. I think that we're going to call this done for today. I'm, I'm going to comment here a couple of things. Number one, uh, yeah, I'm real not happy with this one key. It's not working just right. I'm going to leave it like it is right now. I've got a friend of mine, uh, G.W. Bowen, who lives out in Texas. He's one of my YouTube viewers. He happens to be the son-in-law of a coworker of mine, and he's going to be in town over Christmas. He's a collector of typewriters. He's been kind of coaching me a little bit on some of the stuff I need to do, pointing me in the right direction on some of these things. And uh, hopefully I haven't disappointed him in the job that I've done. Uh, this is somewhat uncharted territory for me. But he's going to be here over, over Christmas time. And uh, I've already asked him if he'd come out when he's here and uh, kind of go through this thing again with me. And let's do a, maybe a little bit more thorough job and maybe use some of his tricks of the trade to see if we can't get some things a little bit better. And maybe that little key that's sticking in there, maybe we can, he can figure out exactly what's going on with it. But I think it's going to, I think it's, it's, it's going to work just like it is. Um, all we need really in here is a new ribbon. I don't have one. I'm going to have to source one of those. Uh, hopefully you can still order them. I'm, I imagine you can. Uh, but once we do that, I think it'll be ready to actually do some typing. Uh, and in the meantime, I think I'm going to take it in the house. Uh, get it out of the shop where it won't get all dirty and grimy again. Take it in the house and let my wife uh, have it where she can put it on. She's got an old uh, secretary desk. Uh, it's a fold-down, you know, antique-type secretary. I think it'll look real good sitting, sitting up on that. Uh, it'll be not only, hopefully it will not only just be a decoration in the house and a piece of family history for her, but hopefully she can use it to uh, type letters and envelopes on if she so decides to do. So uh, that's going to be a wrap, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and com comments and thumbs up are appreciated. And uh, with that, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.